J. Cole is one of the greatest rappers of his generation, and over the last decade of work, he's made a strong case for one of the greatest of all time. Just tell your friends, Cole on a mission, submitting this spot is the greatest that did it before it all ends, nigga. Cole is a studio rat who has always taken his craft extremely seriously, but the craziest thing about his run is that it seems like he's only getting better with time. From his legendary feature run to the constant reinvention of his flow, Cole continues to prove why he's earned his spot amongst the best in the game. From arena tours to tens of millions of albums sold, he has reached heights that not many people in music will ever get to touch. But this video isn't about going platinum with no features, this is about J. Cole and what he's like in the studio, straight from the mouths of Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, and Kill Edward. So who is Kill? <laughs> Who is Kill who, Edward? Who is Kill Edward? It's some artist, some uh <laughs> some Is really that what we're going with? <laughs> are you really sticking to this? Are you really sticking He's to just this? this artist? He's fired though. Beyond anything else, J. Cole is a student of the game. When Cole first started writing raps, he was tapping into his inspirations and trying to emulate their sound in order to find his own. My first song I ever made was literally just biting. Eminem and Nas. Yeah. You know what I mean? If yeah. you go listen, you will hear both influences. And I feel like when you when you start rapping in the beginning, you really just take all your influences yeah. and, and you just rap like them until eventually you become who you are. Eventually, Cole began to find his own flow, but it definitely didn't happen overnight. While he may make it look easy, Cole is actually one of the hardest working rappers in hip hop when it comes to his pen. Ever since he started, he has been relentlessly working on his craft. Hey, look, mama, I came up. Cold as hell in New York, but I flame up. Straight about that dirty type of shit you cannot clean up. A dollar in a drink, the only things I had to bring up. Now any nigga out there gunning for me, gotta aim up. Say what? Niggas ask me what the feel be like. Just tell them that it's real, hoping that they feel me right. I'm so bright, I close my eyes and I can still see light. I'm so loud, you motherfuckers gotta kill me twice. J. Cole often translated his love for basketball into the way he worked on music in the studio. I mean, more than a decade in, while working on the offseason, Cole would literally do writing drills to sharpen his pen. Cole would force himself to write for a certain amount of time each day and with certain flows just to improve himself every single day while working on the album. Are you okay with getting comfortable, chilling, mailing it in, waiting around on inspiration? If this is as high as you ever got, not career success wise, but from a skill level, like have you wrote your best song? Did you leave no stone unturned creatively? And when I thought about that feeling, I was like, nah, I'm not cool with that. But this isn't new. In fact, when Cole was making the warm up every single day, he would wake up and work on his writing skills. The warm up was literally him practicing his skills, warming up to be in the league, AKA one day be a professional rapper. I mean, it, listen, we talking about practice. But it actually took a while for him to come to this realization. Here he is talking about not realizing the work it took to become that great. All my college friends went and got jobs. Nigga, I'm over here doing some rap shit. And these niggas walk in the backyard to come find me. And they're like, yo, we want to holler at you right quick. Bro, it turned into an intervention. These niggas was like, hey, bro, what you doing? You say you want to do this music shit, but like all you doing is really just like hanging out, partying this shit. Mind you, one part of me is like, nigga, y'all, I'll be with y'all niggas. Like, yeah. the fuck are you talking about? But when they was talking, bro, I swear to God, I sobered up quickly. It was almost like I was on the stage. Nigga, literally, after that, I thought about basketball. Why I ain't making the basketball? Nigga, I love to play. And at this point, I'm 21 years old, you know what I mean, 22. And I'm like, nigga, why you didn't make it in basketball? Because you wasn't fucking working. You thought you'd be outside dribbling the fucking ball, doing something, when really niggas was in the gym with trainers, like putting in work, shooting a thousand shots a day, and your dumb ass over there thinking you doing something, mimicking Iverson. Yeah. So it was like, yo, do you really want to look back 10, 20 years from now with this music shit and be like, the reason you didn't make it in music because you ain't put in the work. So I was like, fuck it. That was the where the warm up came from. Every day nigga, I woke up, uh, wrote verses, made beats. Somewhere along the way, Cole actually began to type out his lyrics for his debut album, but when it came time for the creation of his sophomore project, Born Sinner, he went back to writing in notebooks. Here's why. I didn't read it all the way, but I got enough from it that I needed. It's called The Artist's Way, and it's all about, it's, it's for artists, any artist, writer, actor, you know, whatever you do, whatever your cre creative medium is, it's for like blocked artists. And so about a year into making the album, I had all this incredible material. I was flowing out, like it was flowing, like a floodgate, but it hit a point where it's like, it stopped, you know what I mean? I'm like, ah, it was too much, going to the studio was too much pressure. 
the people in the studio was bothering me, like, yo, why y'all around right now? Y'all messing my vibe up. So I needed to just get away, and I got this book. I don't know how I found out about this book. It just found this, it found me. What? And I, I read it, and one thing it, it talked about was, um, it talked about three pages a day. It was like your, your morning pages. And basically what it wants you to do is to wake up in the morning, and the first thing you do when you wake up is you write three pages, freehand, nonstop. You can't stop. You have to write the first thing to come in your head. So you're like, oh man, I'm wearing a white shirt, I need to shower, I stink, went out last night, blah, blah, red pen, anything that comes to your mind. And, and that's how I got back into writing. And I, you know what I mean? And, and that opened up a lot of things. And I realized I like writing stuff down better. You know what I mean? And the notebook is probably cathartic for Cole because if you look back at even some of his earliest sessions, Cole always had the pen and pad. All right. I only got but so much voice, man. I'm gonna make it work. Rocking. Oh, and then I added the 808. Rocking though, I knew. Everything was building and I knew every step up until it hit a certain point. Like the 808 I knew right away, I had to add it. I don't know what this is. And the way that he writes is both methodical and purposeful. Cole is very aware of the impact that his words have on multiple generations of people and takes that responsibility very seriously when he's in the studio. You get to this height or this level of your career in terms of platform, who's to say the next one is, next one might go down, yeah. could go up. You're never guaranteed to be this high again. Yeah. So at, while I'm here, let me use this opportunity to say the, the realest shit, shit yeah. I have ever sure, said. Absolutely. In case next time that shit down here, yeah. I got when I got to the top of the mountain, no, you said this what is what the fuck I'm gonna say. So that, that intention has been there and that purpose has been there. Something that shouldn't be overlooked is Cole's storytelling ability. With story-driven songs like O3 Adolescence and For Your Eyes Only, he has a unique ability to place himself in someone else's perspective. The latter song even made Joey Badass cry, and honestly, I don't blame him. I remember I listened to this whole album on, on the flight, and this track, For Your Eyes Only, came on, and like, I started getting, like, my eyes started getting watery, like, it hit me. And then the next song that came on was Cranes in the Sky, and the tears just started going, bro. It was, it was just too sentimental for me. Cole brought tears to your eyes. No, no, no. He brought the water yeah, to my water, eyes. But then it was cranes. Then it was. But then Solange, then Solange you not cranes in the sky. Who just got that it out of there? That set the tears down. Yeah, yeah. I was like, God damn. What's the last song you guys cried to? Don't be shy. Let us know in the comments. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. But it's not just the writing. Cole is tied to his music sonically on all levels in the studio. From day one, he has worked closely with his engineers, perfecting the levels, mixes, and mastering of every song. Here he is watching closely as his engineer pulls up the vocal mix. And here he is giving feedback specifically on how the vocals sound on the song. I, you know what I like though? It's just extra now. It's just, okay, maybe that one, but this one is like, I teach him about, I teach him that. It was calculated. I teach him about loyalty. I teach him that skin black like oil, that's a royalty. I show him all the just look at how intensely he's listening back to the final version. Unlike Tupac, who didn't really like to listen back to his mixes ever and would rather spend his time making the music and rapping and let the engineer take care of the rest, Cole loved being involved in every step of the process. But while it may take a while for him to get his mixes just right, when it comes to producing, it seems like sometimes all it takes is one note for Cole to know it's a smash. I was in the zone. Yo, as soon as I heard that, I said, oh shit, yeah, yeah, hold up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what it sounds like right there? It sounds like some beat nut shit. Oh, like, word. Right there. You know yeah, what I mean? like, it's like man, just, yeah. 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 Like, but yo, as soon as I heard that part, I, I knew what I was gonna do. I knew I, was, I just needed that dun 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 I knew right away that I was gonna loop that on top. So then oh, you get this. 
Then you get. When it comes to samples, Cole looks for inspiration in some of the most unlikely places. That's what it is. That's what she pulled up. That's mad pretty. Sound better in Japanese, mm -hmm. <laughs> And when he can't find the right sample, Cole brings in real life instruments to get the perfect sound. <laughs> That last chord you're playing, like play that on the last part of both phrases. Ooh. That makes it sound like a sample kind of, <laughs> like you're Got chopping it. it, you know what I mean? Like, cool, cool. Interesting. Sometimes if that doesn't work, then he'll find the note himself. Even though the joke has always been about J. Cole going platinum with no features, Cole has never had a problem asking for help when it comes to his production. Uh, what's, what's really hood? <laughs> uh, they some keys, man. Yeah, I got some keys on this for me, homie. Sometimes he'll even go to extreme measures to tap in with the producer he wants to work with. Timberland, like he's on Twitch, so like he'll go live on Twitch sometimes, which I don't, I don't be on Twitch, but I watch his YouTube's. Like somebody will capture it on YouTube, or whatever. So it was like, uh, Timberland makes beat, so I clicked it, like, oh shit, and I'm like, oh my god, like this shit is crazy. I was gonna hit him right there, like let me get the beat, but I'm like, nah, because sometimes I hit somebody for a beat and then fuck around and not do nothing. So I'm like, I can't do that to Tim, you know what I mean? Let me at least like, so I looped up the YouTube little rip, made a whole song on the shit. I spent the next two days like writing and recording the song. And like right when I was like 90% through writing it, I'm like, I should probably call him now and get the real files. And I hit him, I'm like, bro, can you send me this beat you played on Twitch? He was like, uh, yeah, I'll send it to you, which one? And I played him the beat and he was like, I did the same that one. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you, you know what I mean? Like, so he had to remake it. Ooh, thank you, bro. That beat, bro. And you ain't even say that, bitch. <laughs> but most of the time, a beat for Cole just starts with a simple piano chord. You know what I want to know? How to learn? Like, say I got something like this, right? Um, that I'm playing right now. Like, how to. then have that and then create like a B section. Born Sinner seemed to be almost like a competition of self with Cole producing the majority of the project on his own and rapping over those beats with no features. But when it's not for himself, a lot of the time when Cole makes a beat, he makes it with a specific person in mind. I ever play that beat I did for, uh, for Jay? No, they was telling me about it though. Oh. This, this is an interesting situation. I want to hear it. You gotta hear it. <laughs> When he first linked up with Kendrick, apparently Cole played him 10 straight beats. His production is crazy, man. I mean, the first time we locked in, he played about 10 beats, man. I wanted 11 of them. First track I did was High Power. Yep, off the batch that he gave me, High Power was it. 
that's how we start coming about grips of, of actually doing a full con concept project together. That's one of my personal favorite J. Cole beats and favorite Kendrick songs of all time, but let me know what song you think Cole has his best production on in the comments below. And J. Cole has no problem sending other people beats. All Corday had to do was ask. We had that, I got a couple uh, beats from Cole. Like he, uh, he reached out, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, my folks live in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And you know, Cole lives in North Carolina. So we uh, we connected in uh, North Carolina. We, we cooked up a couple of jumps. We got some uh, some jumps in the archives. But man, I was like, yo, I need some beats, bro. I was like, yo, I need a beat. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like he's uh, underrated as a producer. So I feel and in a, like a cold beat is like is is rare. You know, it's more rare. So it's right. dope. He also has no problem showing love to upcoming talent in order to work together. J Cole was the one who reached out to Corday first after hearing his 1985 reply. He also reached out to the baby when he was coming up. I just pulled up on him. Uh at the Dreamville, Dreamville, my fault, brunch. And shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. How was that? Play weekend. It was cool. It was cool. We showed love. And he's true to his word. Here's Moneybag Yo talking about how Cole made sure to get a collab in with him. And then I ended up going to his room and I was just telling him, hey, I'm a big fan. And he was like, hey, I'm a big fan. So boom, I was like, damn, for real. And he was like, uh, hey, when I was, I was bumping all of a sudden when I was mixing uh, KOD, mm. I was like, damn, that's super hard. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm, dropping, I'm dropping my first album. I'd love to have you a part of it. Yeah. So boom, he was like, for real? All right, bet, I'm gonna come over there. I ain't thinking he was gonna come for real. Yeah. But shit, I went over there, he come right behind me, told me to pull something up. You sure you work? Just work. Worked. And it's not just about the music. When I asked Kodak Black about his relationship with J. Cole, he said that Cole never withholds any knowledge from him. I know Cole had that lyric in Middle Child. He said you guys had some combos. Had a long talk with a young nigga Kodak. Reminded me of young niggas from Phil. Straight out the projects, no faking, just honest. I wish that he had more guidance from Phil. What, what were some of those conversations you guys talked about? On J. Cole? Yeah. J. Cole, I, I, I brought all them tough. Like, he gave me, like, great advice when he wanted to see me win. Like, you know, some people would try to hold information back. I'm saying yeah. he gave Timmy Rose stuff like that. Some dude was trying to trash Jake, J. Cole about Middle Child. It was saying, oh, it just fell off at the end. It was like, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I can't take you serious. You critique that? Right, right. And then it's like, sometimes you'll be like, yo, but you listen to that. And then you say this is trash like right. that that I I can't respect your opinion. And Young Thug shared a similar sentiment. It's a very 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 important learning experience. It's just like nigga he the biggest act that his this is his concert. He the biggest act but he still opened up. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that shit just calmed me down like yo you too much of a superstar nigga calm down. This nigga got more money than you. Right. He opened up at his own tour. He come out with with a suit on with with a, with a mask on and shit. It's called Kill Edward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's him, though. His alter ego. I don't ego. think I'm supposed to say it. Right, right. No, we know. We know. Yeah, 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 we don't yeah, figure yeah, it out. The Kill yeah, Edward is yeah. J. Cole. <laughs> yeah, Kill Edward was him. So once I just seen that, it's like, okay. And then we started talking. I might catch him before he get on the stage. Like, yo, nigga, we got a link. Like, what the f we, we ain't gonna make We ain't going to make this awkward now. Mm -hmm. He just ain't finna be on tour. Just be <laughs> yeah. <so> idiot. <laughs> like, we got a link. But collaboration wasn't always a big goal for Cole. <laughs> See what I did there? Didn't even mean a rhyme, but listen, it happened. <laughs> At first, he liked to work in his own zone. It wasn't until recently that he wanted to step outside of that comfort zone and take over other people's tracks. And like he said on Benny the Butcher's Johnny P. Caddy, aka Verse of the Year in 2022, debate me in the comments. This nigga want me on the song, he gonna see the wrath of the reaper. I'm probably gonna go to hell if Jesus asked for a feature. What do you think Cole's best verse of all time is? For me, it's his Pretty Little Fears verse, then his Sacrifices verse, as you can tell, I'm an emotional guy, but this verse is a close third. It's just like Deborah, putic for me. There's no shooters for me. Just some niggas that wanna prove to me they down. I rarely bring them round, cause they still stuck in their ways. My state's still the same. Can't help nobody till they ready to change. But I don't give up. I'll be here waiting for you the day you decide that you'll no longer be a slave to your pride. Until then, keep your head on a swivel for my niggas that dibble, dabble in street life, hoping to get a nibble of. American pie, equality, an arrogant lie told louder by the people that hold power, listen. But when it comes to him asking other people for features, Cole has no problem just straight up asking. If you listen to Can I Get a Verse on this and the uh, Shook Ones beat, 
And uh, while you at it, you might as well throw a couple things lined up for you, you know? You know Jay Z, I got a few projects that I like checklist. to get you on. J. Cole is a rapper, producer, and cares for every aspect of the music, but above all, he doesn't get enough credit for being an executive producer. From what he's done with his own work, to Dreamville, to helping other artists out, Cole's ability to put together a full body of work is almost unmatched when it comes to his peers. But Cole has people that he trusts with his work in order to tell him when he's got something special. Here he is talking about flying all the way to LA just to hear No ID's opinion on Power Trip. Yeah, I played the shit with No ID, this nigga stood up and clapped. Like, you gotta know his reactions and like, he only gives you like, yeah, yeah, on that one, that's a great reaction, bro. Yeah, that's good. Like when he does this, like that's a good. That one. means it's great. <laughs> this nigga stood up and like <laughs> and clapped, dog. I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. That's a producer. Reaction. We flew to LA just to play yeah. this shit for. And then after all that work, Cole just hops on his bike and heads home. J. Cole is a legend. There will always be debates about who the greatest of each generation is, and the argument for his peers are valid. But when it comes to Cole's career, he has nothing left to prove. He's put out classic albums, collaborated with people from each generation and killed them all, created a successful label, and wrapped his ass off. I have no doubt that the kid from Fayetteville, North Carolina, heading out to New York to chase his dreams, would be proud of the man and the artist that he is today. He worked with Jay-Z and he didn't have to die trying. And coming from a clear Cole fan, if you're watching this right now, Cole, I just want you to know that you are a GOAT, but you don't need me to tell you that. Thank you for the work and thank you for the art. For Hip Hop DX, I'm Jeremy Heck. Thank you guys for watching. This has been another episode of our DX Deep Dive series. Let us know who we should cover next and let us know what is the one J. Cole studio session that you would have loved to have been in the studio for in the comments below. I hope you take one step closer towards your dream today and I hope you have a great day. Nobody else told you today. I love you. And with that, I'm out. To be a rapper, you gotta always keep your pen sharp and like be ready to go into battle at any time. The competition, the sport of rap. And there's been times in my career where it's just like, that's so far from where I wanna be. You know, it's like, I'm just interested in telling stories and like, you know, getting across a message and a, and a theme. And if I get chills, mm -hmm. I know, that's when I know. Like, yeah. oh, if I tell a story, it's like, ah. Yeah. You know, that's when I know.